So I'm in a little bit of, predi of a predicament right now. What I got to do is now, anyway, the next time you click the button, this switch is already on, so the power goes to here, and the AND statement is going to activate. And when you got that activated, that means we're going to take this power, and since since it is uh, just one of these, since we're doing one of these, we're going to go ahead and reset it so that it turns off, basically. And what we got to do to reset it is we got to reset this switch, which is connected to the door, thus taking away power from the door and turning it off. So at this point, if you've been able to fully follow along, it should be kind of making sense how this is going to all come together. So I'm going to have to do something a little tricky here to allow myself to the ability to get to this switch because to turn the switch the other way, ah, there we go. We're going to, I'm going to have to um, provide or I'm gonna have to provide power to this block here in my bed. So let me take this out and I brought this all around for no reason. I'm gonna have to provide power to that block. So to be able to do that I'm going to do some little tricky and this is kind of important to know anyway so it kinda of worked out. Um, if you don't already know how to do this you can provide power with the redstone torch from the bottom and as you can see it switched our switched off already and closed the door so now the switch is set in this position instead of this part being on because the purpose of a switch is either one part or the other part is always on no matter what and as you see it switched to the default position or the position that closes our doors and what we're gonna want to do is have this by default off so we're just going to put a block right here and a torch here oh that's not gonna work we're not gonna have enough room so what we'll do is put the block here I'm gonna have to put redstone here and we can place a torch here and so by default this torch is off not affecting the this block here but it's only gonna affect it and turn it off whenever the AND circuit is fully activated right now it's not activated at all and our switch is completely in position one or zero alright then we go from zero to position one which is gonna open the door as you can see it switched the switch into the on position if you'd like the, when this side's on it's the off this side is the on it's powering this part of the and circuit and the and it's also branching off to open the door if you follow it as you click it again it goes through activates the and circuit and the and circuit comes around and turns the switch off the other way by activating Oh, wait, what happened there? Okay, okay. Well, it should have activated this and switched the switch. I'm not entirely sure why it did not. It seemed that... Hmm. Alright, let's try to figure out what's going on here. Okay, okay. So it goes through and turns this off, and it seems like it's turning off the power to this, but that is somehow turning back on for some strange reason instead of turning this on when it loses power. So let's keep an eye over here. Yeah, for some reason the switch is not turning because... Okay, okay, I, I'm sorry. I forgot one little, little, little tiny step here. You're going to, on this side, you're going to need this AND statement to take longer than 
the other side, meaning you're going to have to have at least four of these little repeaters uh, to enable it to take longer because what was happening before is it was turning this off but then the current from here was still going, it turned it off and then this automatically flipped the switch back. So if you're able to connect four of these, which is one more than the three that we had over there, and flip them all the way on, that way this will go through, activate the switch, but the switch is already activated so it does nothing, and then this finally goes through right after that and deactivates the switch. So now we click our button and finally goes through, doors closed. Click the button again, goes through, doors open. Alright, now what we can do, all you have to do is this is your input section. You can put input anywhere with this. So what I'm going to do is just drag this over this little section of redstone and I'm going to plop down a couple of these every once in a while just to keep our current going. And you know, how about right here? What's wrong with right here? We'll just put down a little button and put it right there. Put our redstone up here. And as you can see, the door, or it should, oh, my bad, my bad. The input, you always got to remember to keep your repeater facing the correct direction and since you're extending it you want the current to go this way through and you'll you'll see the little arrow you got an arrow on your repeater so anyway you click through it and it'll close the door and if you click this button the door is closed it'll realize that and it'll open it click this button again it'll and you can continue to add buttons. You can add one on the other side of this door. In fact, you can add one how about right here on the on the wall? Let me see. I'm not sure if a button will go directly down. A little bit of lag. Um, click it again. Open. Click it again. Closed. Close and automatically flip it the opposite. Now it'll do the same thing if you've got like three or four. If it's on two and you click any of the buttons, it's going to go to three. If you if it's on four and you got it so it'll reset after four, click any of the buttons, it'll reset. It doesn't matter which button you press. So that about wraps this up. If you're confused, please comment. I'll try to answer your question as soon as I possibly can. Uh, please rate and subscribe. Thank you for watching.